Coming up, Ipswich councillors draw a line in the sand. The Pasali name issue finally resolved, but not without some further angst about who said what during the election campaign. Happy to talk to you about it later. I think it's clear that we need to go to some couples therapy. It might take more than couples therapy to improve relations. It's Tuesday, July 12, 2022, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. A second special council meeting this month, held on July 12, has reversed the June 30 resolution to reinstate the Pasali name on a bridge and road, which itself overturned a previous resolution last December to remove the name. From the July 12 special meeting, Mayor Theresa Harding. Uh, While it's my personal preference to conduct more casual meetings in compliance with the Local Government Act and regulations, others have indicated that meetings can be an intimidating space. It is my responsibility as the chair of this special meeting to ensure that this meeting is held in accordance with the standards of behaviour set out in the Code of Conduct for councillors. To do that, I intend to closely follow our meeting procedures policy and meeting conduct policy at today's meeting. We will have a mover, a seconder, and we'll have speakers alternate for and against as per the policy. Councillors speaking will be limited to five minutes as per the policy. All comments are to be directed to me a one council will be speaking at any one time. There'll be no interruptions, noise or disturbances except to raise a point of order. Councillors will confine their remarks to the matters under consideration. And a reminder that this chamber does not enjoy the same legal protection and privileges that the state or federal parliaments enjoy. What we say here has consequences. I will now speak to the, uh, as the mover. Theresa Harding spoke in favour Here is part of what the Mayor said. The backlash from our community the last 12 days does not surprise me. Dismissed councillors naming council assets after themselves was a big election issue in 2020, and I'm still asked every day, when are you changing the names? So I was not surprised from the backlash. The Queensland Times conducted candidate forums during the campaign, and all the mayoral candidates and the candidates for Division 1, 3 and 4 were asked for their stance on the issue. Every single mayoral candidate voted to change the name of council assets, including a dismissed councillor. In total, six people in this chamber told our community during the election campaign that they would remove the names. I called for a report in 2020 to list all the council assets named after dismissed and convicted councillors and if they could be renamed under our procedures. This report was shared with the community. Last year, I approached the other five councillors and let them know that by the end of the year, we would have to fulfil our election commitment and be accountable to the community for our election commitment. I moved a mayoral motion on the 9th of December 2021 to dename the Paul Pasali Bridge and Pasali Drive. All nine councillors voted in line with their commitments during the election, and I praise them for following through. The vote that was before us on the 30th of June was the renaming of the bridge and road, not the re-prosecution of the denaming. Over the last 12 days, our community has made their views abundantly clear. They do not want the Pasali name put back up. We are here today to listen to and act on our community's views and follow council procedure on city assets that bear the Pasali name. I'm aware that aspects of this incident are being assessed by the Office of the Independent Assessor and I welcome their scrutiny. I ask that councils respect the process of the Office of the Independent Assessor and do not say or do anything to compromise their assessment. We need to remember the reasons why we're in this position. Our city was rocked to its core in 2017 following the arrest of former Mayor Paul Pasali on a range of fraud and corruption charges. He was found guilty and convicted of fraud, official corruption, extortion and, disturbingly, counts of sexual assaults. His arrest led to further charges from the Crime and Corruption Commission, snaring senior council staff and exposing corruption, widespread maladministration and poor governance. There has been commentary that the drive in Yamanto is named after the former Mayor's parents. It is correct that our records indicate that it is named for the former councillors Charlie and Paul's parents, Giuseppe or Joe Maria Pasali, both of whom were migrants who made a better life for their family here in Australia. I have no issues with honouring people from our city who have made outstanding contributions to our community through public life, service to the city or in some other capacity. What I do take issue with 
is councillors who use their position of influence to name public assets after the members of their own family. While I don't doubt Charlie Pasali's genuine love for his parents, I have serious concerns about the integrity of the decision-making process. Arguments that a conflict of interest weren't an issue are misleading. The Local Government Act at the time of the decision required councils to make material personal interest disclosures when dealing with matters involving direct family members gaining a benefit. Clearly when nominating his own mother and father for the honour of having a street named after them, this would trigger a material personal interest disclosure from Charlie Pasali. There appears to have been no such declaration at the time, and I note that Councillor Paul Tully was the planning committee chair at the time. I also want to thank the member for Ipswich, Jennifer Howard, the Attorney General, Shannon Fentiman, Opposition Leader, David Crisofulli, and Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk for their clear and strong leadership on this issue. Councillor Ireland proposed recommendations be split for councillors to vote on. May, may I ask that, um request that each of the four items be moved separately, please. So you're moving the motion uh, the vote that the items be moved separately? Yes, please. Yep. I'll put that matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Uh, Councillor Madsen, Councillor Ireland, Councillor Johnny, and Councillor Tully voted for. Those against? Myself, Councillor Cornsman, Councillor Milligan, Councillor Fechner, Councillor Doyle, that motion is lost. They will be moved together in batch. Councillor Paul Tully spoke against the full motion, which included allowing the CEO to decide the new name in consultation with traditional owners, but said he would have supported three of the four parts of the motion to remove the Pasali name. I just have an issue, and it's unfortunate that um, Council has voted uh, not to take each one of these items separately. Um, if we had, I would have supported A, B and C. I have a concern with uh, paragraph D in, in relation to the delegation to the amended paragraph D, the delegation to the CEO. Uh, there's no requirement for consultation um, after that initial consultation process uh, with councillors. Um, and I don't believe, given the um, public interest in this particular matter, that we should delegate our powers uh, to approve uh, names um, uh, for both of those, um, uh, the bridge and the uh, road. Um, I certainly don't want to read in the newspaper of what the names were because there's no requirement in, in paragraph D for that to um, uh, have any consultation with councillors. And I think the fact of the matter is that um, there is considerable public interest in this and I think we as a mature council uh, should be involved in that process to make the final decision. So, um, as I said, I, I um, support paragraphs A, B and C. Um, I support the consultation pro process in the amended paragraph D, but not the final decision-making uh, process. Councillor Tully also moved amendments, but his motion failed. In the end, councillors Tully and Ireland abstained from voting. Councillor Jacob Madsen also spoke to the motion. Um, I'll be voting for... Um for this today, um, I' a bit disappointed we couldn't split them up. I think that would have allowed people to have their views on each item recorded, and that would be a, a better meeting outcome. Um, I don't want to labour the point, Mayor, but I have no recollection of that being a question at the QT candidate forum, so I reject your assertion this morning. Furthermore, no recollection of you discussing this with me prior to the meeting in December. That's my views on what occurred. Um, I have to correct the record, because that's not um, that's not anything that I recall. Happy to talk to you about it later. I think it's clear that we need to go to some couples therapy. Um, other than that, um, looking forward to getting on with the job and dealing with other matters. Um, yeah, I've raised the things I'm disappointed about this morning. I think that's clear. Mayor Harding made these comments. And finally, Alex, who wrote, I'm absolutely flabbergasted that in this day and age, we will continue to allow sex offenders to have anything named after them, including a bridge or a street in my area that I drive past regularly. And Alex continues, leadership requires making choices that amplify voices that are marginalised, like women and victims of crime. And the morally right choice is not always the most popular choice with those in privileged positions. I'd like to say to Alex, Romain and Roslyn, and the hundreds of others who've contacted us, and stopped us in the street. We hear you loud and clear. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's myself, Councillor Cornsman, Councillor Milligan, Councillor Fechner, Councillor Doyle, Councillor Jonick, and Councillor and the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Those against? 
There are nil against, abstain. Council Island, Council Tully have abstained. A reminder you'll find links in the show notes, including to Council's YouTube channel, where you can watch meetings live or on demand. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is also listener-supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au and click the Donate button on the homepage to make a payment through PayPal. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcasts, or play Ipswich Today from smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening.